Hey, how's it going? This is McCoy Buck. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to rig your character using the new feature that just released in Moho 13.5 called the Truvian Bones. This will be a three-part series. Part one, I'll show you how to rig your character with the new Vitruvian Bones. Part two, I'll show you how to animate with Vitruvian Bones. And part three, I will show you how to create advanced rigs using Vitruvian Bones. Really excited for this one. With that being said, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I try to upload a Moho tutorial once a week, but I only get to work on Moho in my spare time. So if you wanna support my work, consider subscribing to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below on what you'd like to see next. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do to create a Vitruvian bone rig is I first need to draw out the different layers that I want. So in this case, I want this character to be jumping. And as he's jumping up, I want his arms to have a foreshortening effect. So they're coming out in front of him and the arm behind him is also gonna have that foreshortening along with the legs. So I've already drawn out these layers and I'll show you what these look like. Right here, I have them labeled in the color red. And if I go up to my filter and I go ahead and I filter out my label color for red, this is gonna quickly bring up those layers. And as you can see here, I have the arm front, I have a leg front, I have a leg back, I have a hand back, and I have an arm back. So as far as the layers themselves, it depends on how complex of an animation you have is how complex of a, of a rig you need to have. So in this case, like you saw in the beginning, when he jumps up, his arms are only going from one position to the next. So I'm basically taking his bottom arms here and I'm raising them up to this position here and then I'm switching to this arm layer. So the front arm is all on one layer. They're just separate shapes. So as you can see there, I can take this shape here and I can just pull that off. So they're all just separate shapes, but they're all on the same layer. So that's the same case for the front arm, for the back leg here, or sorry, for the front leg here, it's the same thing. And as you can see, I just have a, a quick little drawing to show a foreshortening uh, effect there for his legs as he's jumping up. And then there's one for the back leg there. And then something that I wanted to show as a different example is you could actually have two layers or however many layers as you want on one Vitruvian bone switch. And this is actually how you get more advanced rigs that I'll go over in the part three of the series for Vitruvian bones. But as far as the hand, I have the hand layer here and then I have the arm layer. I could also have that all on one layer, but just to show you how to rig with two layers for one Vitruvian bone, it's basically the same way you would for any of the other body parts. Okay, so I'm gonna have all of those layers visible. So that's the first thing you'll wanna do is plan out what you want your limbs to be doing, what limbs you wanna switch to. So like my character is just a very simple uh, jumping up animation that's what I would need those limbs for. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch my filter back to no filter so I can see all of my layers. And something that's really cool is I have them labeled red, but once I have these bound, a new option that was added to the layers panel with Vitruvian bones is you can hide Vitruvian layers. So once the, the bones are, are uh, attached to the actual layers and they're set as Vitruvian bones, I can then go ahead and toggle them on and off here, which is really nice. Okay, and just like any other rig, what you need to do is you need to draw out your bones. So if it helps to have some of the bones hidden, uh, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that myself. I'm gonna go ahead and hide some of these bones. Actually, you know what? Before that, uh, I picked a really bad example to use for this, uh, for this tutorial because as you can see there, the color blue on blue, that's actually really hard to see. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm just gonna go to the filter again, name contains, and I know that I have my legs. So I'm gonna select all of my legs here, and I'm gonna select all the layers. I'm gonna to go to the uh, dotted icon there, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and switch that down to 50. So I could either use the filter or I could go through and I could select uh, each one. And it, depending on the size of your rig, which is why I'm showing you the filter, it might take a little bit longer. The other advantage that this has is you can actually see through. So that kind of makes the rigging process a little bit easier. There's an option where you can see points so you can match up points exactly. And that's with your paths. But as far as seeing through to the other side, that might help with this rig just a little bit. 
And then the last layer is gonna be that hand layer there. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock that down to 50. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the bones that I wanna hide, or in this case, uh, shy. I'm gonna use the shy bone option. So I have this arm here that I just wanna shy, just so it's not in the way. And then I have the legs. So I already know that I'm creating separate legs separate from these ones. So I'll just get these out of the way so they're not cluttering my workspace. I'll just go here, shy bone. Okay, cool. So the first thing I need to do, just like I would if I'm normally rigging, is I need to set up my parent. So I'm gonna start with the front arm here and I'm going to alt left click, hit A on the keyboard, make sure I'm on the bone layer. And I'm gonna assume actually by this point that you know how to rig, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Uh, on how to rig this, but I am gonna do the same thing for the other arm, draw out my bones. And then for the hand here, I'm probably just gonna have the bone right there. And then going to the leg, I have it parented to the root bone, so that's where I'm gonna have it. And again, like I said, having the opacity is kind of helpful because I could see kind of on both sides there of, of where those legs are going in the back. And then I'll add a bone, I guess, for the foot. I don't know if I really need one. And then I'll do the same thing with the back. It's kind of a little bit harder to see there, but I think the back leg, actually it doesn't really matter because I know what the animation is gonna be. Uh, I can just create the two bones there and that should be good. So I'm gonna double check my parenting. Hit A, maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so I can see all the parenting for, for my bones there. All right, and just like normal rigging, we're now going to bind our bones to, or bind the layers to the rig. So I'm going to go ahead and Select this whole layer. I'm gonna first try the selective flexi binding method to see if that will be my best bet here. So I'll hit Control Shift F. Oh, and I have my my keyboard shortcuts here. I bought this little tool here, so it displays my keyboard shortcuts a lot better to what I was using before. Okay, and that looks a little janky. So let's go ahead and let's uh, go to the strength. Let's lower the strength a little bit there. Okay, I think that looks good. My opacity's probably faded out just a little bit too much there. But we can bring back the opacity and, and just continue testing. But for right now, I'm just quickly gonna go through and I'm just gonna bind my bones. Now, actually, I'm gonna alt right click and I'm gonna select this layer. This layer is on a separate layer than this other layer here, than the hand layer. So I'm actually just gonna bind these two bones to the hand there, or to the arm rather. So those two bones to the arm. And then for the hand, I'm going to bind that just to the hand. Okay, and I'm getting a little bit of weird warping effect there. So I did flexi binding on the hand. Uh, let's see, I'm probably gonna do, with this hand layer still selected, I'm gonna select both of these bones and let's try that. Let's try to flexi bind both of those bones, see if I get, nope, okay, so that's not gonna work. So what I'm gonna do, is I am just have this one layer uh, selected. I think I'm just gonna make this a layer binding. So I'm just gonna bind the layer to the hand there. And then I'm gonna bind the points to the end of the arm to this hand bone, so that when the hand moves down, there we go. So that looks a little bit better. And I'm not worried because there's not too much movement going on there. This is just a really quick, dirty rig to show you uh, quickly how to put this together. Okay, and then I'm just gonna adjust my strength here. So I should have these two separate arms separate from one another, and that looks good. And then I'm gonna do the same thing really quick. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just setting up the binding just like I normally would on my normal rig. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring back the opacity on all my layers. All right, and then I'm gonna test the arms once again, just make sure everything's good to go there. Cool. Good to go on the legs. All right, so that's it. That's all you have to do. So we're basically just uh, creating two sets of legs, two sets of arms, and they're all being bound to their proper parent. So the parent being the torso for the arms and the parent being the, the in this case for me, the root bone for the legs. That's where all the legs are gonna be going. All right, now I'm gonna go to bone and I'm going to go to show all bones. So now I got my arm bones back. All right, so as far as everything we just did there, you should be already familiar with. Because now what we're gonna do is we're going to add our bones into Vitruvian groups. 
So to create a Vitruvian group, and I'll probably call it V-bone here on out because Vitruvian gets really hard to say, is I'm going to select the parent bone of the original arm, and then I'm gonna select the parent bone of the new arm. I'm gonna hold down Shift and select that with the Select Bones tool. I'm gonna to go over here to the V-bones tool, and with those two selected, I'm gonna select Group. Now I can go ahead and I can label this Arm Front, and you can see that it's Vitruvian bone because now it has this little icon here letting me know that this parent bone is now part of the Vitruvian group or the V-bone group. So this is gonna be stored in Vitruvian group and you can actually go and select your different groups inside of this option here. And it actually looks like it's storing other things that aren't there. Yeah, unfortunately, I was doing a little bit of testing before and it looks like I was creating some different arm bones, but they didn't delete out when I deleted the bones. So because this is 13.5, it just released, that might need to be reported as far as a potential bug. But I think it's this bottom one that's gonna be my new group. But like much of Moho, there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. So instead of going to the group dropdown every time here, I mean, it helps to have the arm labels and things like that. What I can do is I could just select the actual bone and that'll bring me right into the group. If I just select that bone, you can see it's gonna bring in arm front. Now to the same thing, I'm gonna select the original arm bone parent. I'm gonna select the new arm bone parent. And then I'm gonna go into my V bone group and then I'm gonna hit group. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna label this arm back. Do the same thing for the legs. So I'm gonna select the leg parent, which is this top leg here. It's kind of hard to see. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the new leg. Go into the V-bone group, group, and then do leg front. And then we'll do the same thing with the back leg. I'm gonna select the new legs parent, go to the V-bone group, and by now you should probably have a good idea as far as what to do. All right, awesome. Now, like I said, you can go back through and you can see if your, if your bones are grouped properly because it'll have this little V-bone icon right there. Now let's pick a group. So I'm gonna pick the front arm group. And what I can do is I can ungroup this entire group if I wanted to. And actually, you know what? That's probably what I did wrong. I think I was removing, because you can remove individual bones from a group, but I think I forgot to ungroup them, which is why all these still exist, because I was doing it the wrong way. But now with this front arm group selected, I can now switch between the two arms. So what the V-bone groups are actually using is the binding. So it's important that you do have your layers bound. And something that I found out is if you bind a single layer with binding points or point binding, if you just select all the points and then bind it to one layer, that's the one method you don't want to use when it comes to binding methods for Vitruvian groups. Now, if you're just binding certain points of a layer, but not the whole layer, because if you bind all of the points, when you go and you flip through the two different layers, you're gonna see the layer that was bound with only points, it'll be visible when it's switching between the two. So that's not a bug, that's just by design, you only want to do flexi binding or layer binding, or if you're doing point binding, don't bind all the points to one bone, and if that's confusing for you, I can create a separate Vitruvian bone pitfalls to avoid uh, video. So it just kind of helps people out there as well. So now because I bound this bone, I can actually move this Vitruvian bone as you can see there. I can even go in and I can adjust the bone strength. So if I need to make any more adjustments to this bone, I can adjust that as well. Now a keyboard shortcut, once you have your Vitruvian bone parent selected, Instead of going from one spot to the next, you can use this keyboard shortcut right here, which is Alt-D, Alt-C. So that's gonna cycle between the two. So all I do is just use the select bone tool, I cycle it, and it's gonna cycle between those Vitruvian bones. Now another thing, if you still need to make adjustments but your Vitruvian bones are still attached, what you can do is you can select the parent bone for the Vitruvian bone and you can go to enabled and you can uncheck that and that'll show you both your arms. So if you still need to make adjustments to the vector layer itself, some drawing uh, adjustments, instead of having to switch back and forth between the two arms, you can just select enabled on the parent and that'll give you the ability to edit those bones. Another option if you want to select all of your Vitruvian bones and have them, have them all visible so you can make any edits, 
so you can make any edits to the rig or to the, the vectors. You can go up here to bone and you can select disable all Vitruvian bones. And that's gonna bring all your Vitruvian bones back in. And this is actually really helpful in a couple of ways. When it comes to animation, it's, it's really hard to sometimes animate those in-betweens from this leg going up to this leg going here and this leg animating and going up and doing something else. So this is actually a really handy option to be able to toggle those on and off so that you can see and make any adjustments needed. Now the last thing is let's say that you put the Vitruvian bone in the wrong group or, or you just want to redo it all together and you want it out of the group. All you need to do is I'm going to first go back to enable all Vitruvian bones is just select the parent bone of that Vitruvian bone, go to your view bone options, and then you're going to hit minus. So in this case, I want to keep the original arm, but I want to remove the new arm because I want to draw, draw, a new, draw a new one. I'm going to go over here to B40, or I can switch it with the keyboard shortcut. And then I'm just going to hit the minus icon. And as you can see there, it's now removing that arm from the Vitruvian bone group. As you can see, it goes back to the original bone shape. And then the Vitruvian arm bone still keeps the symbol for the bone. And if I wanted to draw another arm and let's say I want to add it back in, you would do the same thing. You would select the existing group, select the new bone, so both parents selected, and then you're just going to hit plus. And that's going to put that back inside of that Vitruvian arm bone group. And then, like I said, I did this the wrong way. But if you want to completely dismantle your Vitruvian bone and just start completely over, you're going to go over here to ungroup. And that's going to remove the Vitruvian bones option for both of those arms. Now, one thing to note is if you are doing animation and you remove these two bones from a group, you're going to lose all your keyframes for all animations tied to these bones for these two arms or any of the groups that you ungroup. This is an undoable function, so I can hit Control Z to undo, but just keep that in mind in case you do have animation already on this. And that's it. In the next video, I'm gonna go over how to animate with V-Bones. So we're gonna talk about a lot more about switching between the bones, and then we're gonna talk about the new keyframes that were added for these v Vitruvian bones. I'm really excited for this feature. This is really big. In part three, I got something pretty cool planned for advanced V-Bone rigs. I'm really excited to see what other people are gonna be able to make with these. I gotta say, I'm really happy with this point release, 13.5. This is, it's free to those that have 13. For those at the time of this recording, up until May 31st of 2021, they could upgrade for $100 from Moho Pro 12 to Moho Pro 13. And you get this, and uh, this right here could be like the next, this right here is basically like the next smart bone, the next smart warp. This is the leap up, and this is so crazy because it's just happening in a point release. It's it's in between versions. It's 13.5. So I'm really excited for the future. Awesome job to the Moho team, which right now is just Mike and Victor. But I'm so excited for the future of Moho, and I will see you in the next video.